this video from Shop Stuff. We're taking a look at the Casio SRC 550 register. Um, this is an overview of the machine, pointing out some of the key features of it. If you've got a specific interest in the reports, uh, stop control, or other functions the machine has, I'm going to do a playlist and have a, a detailed look at some of those functions. But this video is like a sales introduction to the machine, really. So if you're familiar with the Casio range, the SRC 550 was released in 2019 and replaced, directly replaced the SEC 450, which itself replaced the old SEC 300 a number of years ago. Um, like the 450, it's a what I call a split keyboard machine. So you have a raised portion of buttons over here, obviously, um, like a retail cash register would have, and then you have um, a flat keyboard um, of individual department buttons on the right hand side. Um, so because of this, it's quite a flexible machine. Um, you could use it in retail environments because it has barcode scanning capacity and can be used like a traditional convenience store cash register by typing in a price into a random department. Uh, but because of the flat keyboard element, it also has um, the ability to be used in hospitality. So cafes, chip shops, um, pubs, restaurants could use this machine. Uh, the limitation of it from that point of view would be a couple of things. There's only 72 buttons on it, um, which might be okay for some cafes and chip shops, but some bars and particularly restaurants would have a much more extensive menu than that so you might struggle to get all the all the items in but it does have that functionality so you can preset your department buttons to be specific products with descriptions and preset prices and then obviously you can have a keyboard done so that it says the item name um, on each button and then comes up that way so it, it's quite a flexible machine um, if you're familiar with the 450 um, what are the key differences between the 450 and the 550? There's, for me, there's probably two or three, really. They've, they've changed the overall style of the machine, so I think it does look a lot smarter with the bright blue um, operator display. It just looks a lot smarter, a lot more modern than the old green display on the 450. But obviously, that's a nicety. In terms of actual functionality, if you were familiar with the way the barcode programming worked on the old Casio machines, it was a bit cumbersome. They've, they've improved that um, a lot. Obviously, if you're not using it for barcode scanning, that is then totally irrelevant. The, the big difference, the big feature is the smartphone um, connectivity. So Casio have a app, uh, an app, uh, the ECR Plus Connected, I think its full name is. Um, so you can back up the TIL programming uh, to Bluetooth, which is useful. Um, the big advantage of it is, is you can pull your reports back to the to the app. I think that that's the real thing on the on the app. So I'll just pop it on there again. The, the app's quite detailed, so I'll do a, a separate video showing you all the benefits of the of the app but for me really it's your reporting feature now we've been selling this machine a little while before we've done this video and the, the fact that it's Casio have gone heavy on promoting the Bluetooth connectivity of it has um, put some people off because um, we deal with a lot of traditional um, shopkeepers convenience stores who may not be that bothered about Bluetooth um, connectivity and having all your report data on your smartphone so if that's a concern to you you can use the register without the Bluetooth um, it's totally optional um, you can use the register in the old just traditional way so if you're looking to directly replace your 450 then the 550 will do the job perfectly um, so if you're not familiar with a 450 which a lot of people won't be let's look at some of the um, key functions of the register so You've got a traditional key lock here, um, so if I subtotal, cash off that sale. So you have reg mode, obviously for registering your sales, um, off obviously. You then have a refund mode. Um, now this is, um, Casio Tills always are supplied with two operator keys 
and two manager keys. So I'm using the manager key. If the operator keys in, they can't turn it, they can only turn to off and reg. So the refund mode is um, protected, as is the programming mode. Uh, you then have an X mode for your reports, your non-resetting reports. So I'll go into more detail on what report information you get on the register in a, in a separate video. Um, but you've got also got Zs, which are your resetting reports, and then your X2, Z2 reporting as well. Um, there's an SD card slot on the machine, um, so that's useful for, again, backing up your programming information. That's useful in case you get a second till and you want to copy the programming from the first one and send it down to the second one. Obviously, that saves time and then paying for someone to do it for you. Uh, but you can also set it so that your reports are backed up to the SD card as well. Um, so that's not going as far as the app, but people do like that because it basically means when you put your SD card into your laptop or PC, it brings up your sales data, it basically creates a folder for each day you've run a report, and then you get all the same information that you would do out of the till um, appearing on your, uh, well it opens it in Excel. So the, let's have a look at the printer. Um, so it's a single station printer machine. There is a twin roll version. So there's an SRC 4500, which is pretty much exactly the same, except that it has two printers. Um, so one receipt printer and then one um, journal printer. This one, you've only got one. You can have the receipt switched on or off. So I've got it set to off. Um, so if I print that sale out, cash that sale off, you then have a post receipt button here. That gives you an idea of the receipt that you can have on there. You can have that set to automatically come out with every sale. So I've got it switched off so you can have your company name and information at the top, um, date, time, and then each item, if it's programmed, is itemized out uh, by price and description. Um, in terms of putting sales through, um, you can, either, like I've said, you can either use it in the preset format where you're pushing individual buttons. You've got a multiply button, so if you sell five times a certain product, that works fine. Um, if you're using it in the traditional sense where it's open departments, you type in the price and then hit your um, relevant department button. And it'll um, save it that way. Tender buttons, there's only two on the machine as standard, uh, which doesn't sound like a lot, but um, is actually adequate in most places. So you have cash here, CA amount tendered. So if the sale was £43.40 and they paid by cash and handed over £50, you could type in five double zero CA amount tend. Um, and it displays the change on the screen and then also on the receipt that prints out. Um, if they're paying by card, which is the only other way people pay these days, um, you have the till manufacturers a little bit frustrating in the sense that they will refuse to change the buttons from check because obviously check payments died out years ago. Um, so, but I, the way I would use that, if some, I would use the check button as my credit card button. So, if someone the card goes through the machine, you then hit your CHK check button. Pop the credit card receipt if one prints out your copy of it into the till like you would with the money and that's the sale done. So when you do your end of day report, um, the, the reason why there are different tender buttons is that you get an amount for cash and then an amount for check. So you would just know on this machine, well, I don't take checks, so that's my credit card total. So you've got something to then um, reconcile with your credit card machine. Um, so what are the other key functions on the machine? Uh, if we have a look at some of the buttons on there. One of the advantages of the display that I really like is it's easy to, if you've made a mistake on a sale, you can use the arrow down button to go, right, that Moretti half, I shouldn't have run that through. Um, you can arrow down to it, highlight it, and then basically get rid of it. Um, so that's a really useful function. Um, Cashiers on the machine, as standard on these Casios, they don't, although it probably says in the literature you can have up to a certain number of operators on, the machine will work without anyone logged on it. Um, so if I clear the screen down, this bit here, register, that just telling me I'm in the reg mode. So if I turn the key to a different one, it then says something different. The number here is the number of transaction. Um, so there's no clerk currently logged in, so you don't need um, 
to log in. Now, so if you want a machine with um, cashiers on to protect the register um, from the people using it without anyone having to log in or because you're trying to track sales by operator, then you can, I've done another video on this machine where you can have cashiers on it, um, but it doesn't work out the box. So it is a function that if you want, I'd strongly recommend wherever you get the machine from, you get the machine programmed and speak to the people beforehand and say, I want to use it with operators. Because if you just have it with basic programming, you won't have any operators on there, which is not necessarily a problem because the machine works fine without operators. But if that is a requirement of yours, then mention it to whoever you're buying it off and um, yeah, they'll, they'll sort it out. Um, just like that, you can also have um, table tracking on this machine. Again, it's it's a dormant feature, as standard. It's not if you were trying to program it yourself through the manual, um, I, I wouldn't recommend it. So again, it's a feature that is available, but only as an option. So you you'd only be able to have it if you were having it pre-programmed. So if you're getting it from us, you'd have to order on a platinum service, and you'd then need to specify, look, I want this function on it. Um, I've actually got it set up on here. Now, the, one of the weird things is you can't have, the way the machine works is you can't have table tracking and cashier interrupt on the same time. So if you have cashiers, you can't have the table tracking. So that's one of the limitations of the machine. If you, if you need cashiers signed on, logged in uh, on the machine, and you're looking to do table tracking, then, then this machine isn't, um, isn't going to be for you. I'll, I'll put some recommendations up for a machine that would be suitable because we'll do them, but it's just that this one won't. Um, the table tracking, I've got it set up. So the way it works is um, if you're at the start of a sale, you can type in a table number. Uh, that's how unfamiliar I am with it. Two, that's it. So you won't put up the table. Enter your items, um, and then this button NB will lay it away. And you can then recall the tab up at a later date. Now there, there is a limitation in our, in our testing of the machine. You can have about a thousand lines open at any one time, but per tab you can only have a maximum of a hundred lines. So a hundred lines on a tab does sound like a lot, but really, um, if it's like a big table at a restaurant, you you'll be amazed how how quickly those lines can build up. So again. Have a real think if the, the machine does have the function but it's really um, like a very basic version of it which is reflected by the price of the machine because if you're buying a programmed cash register uh, for 400 quid um, that's fully set up for you then obviously there's going to be limitations and there's reason why the touchscreen models are popular um, and then therefore a lot more expensive but again i'll have a bit more information that on some other videos and if anything doesn't make sense you can always give us a call and we'll We'll, we'll advise as best as we can and, and, and tell you what we think is best for your business. Okay, so you can see there's a scanner lurking there in the background. So if you're obviously if you're using this machine in a cafe or restaurant, you're not going to be interested in the barcode scanning. But if you're using it in a news agent or convenience store, then you can um, have barcodes on there. I'm pretty sure that the limit, the old SEC 450 had 2,000 scanning lines limit. I'm sure this one, I should have checked before I did the video, but I'm pretty sure this one had a limit of 3,000. Um, so, but if, 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 I mean, a lot of shops we deal with, um, 1,000 scanning lines is more than enough. Um, so it, it easily covers that, so that's an option for you. Again, when you order the machine from shop stuff, we'll give you the option of taking it with a scanner. Um, so you can either have a single beam Viper scanner or of the, the um, scanner here is the omnidirectional scanner we do. So obviously an omnidirectional scanner is faster, um, quicker, um, and reads um, damaged barcodes better than the, the normal scanner. Uh, but I, again, I'll have a separate video on that. Um, so yeah, I think I've kind of covered everything I've wanted to cover in the general sales video. It's hard to know, everyone wants, everyone has a different question and wants to know something specific about the machine. So I'll have another video showing you the overall dimensions of the machine and the cash drawer insert uh, but basically it's the standard uk one so you've got four note holders eight coin holders it's a metal base um, very similar to the 450 so it's a um, good strong solid base um, changing the till roll i mean it's easy if you're familiar with the thermal registers you literally just pop this up you've got the journal spool there so you can set the machine to work in journal mode 
um, but that's becoming less popular um, because you can set this machine to have an electronic journal that backs up to either the SD card or even the app. So if you've got all the information um, on an SD card on your phone, what's the point in having a printout of it? But if you're traditional and like the traditional um, paper journal, then you, you can have that option as well. So it's, they're, they're really flexible machines. There are limitations to them, like I've said, about the the way the cashiers on on it is standard and you don't have to use it with them. And then the um, some of the extra functions you can have. Um, but it's, it's a really smart machine. It's a good, good um, entry level cash register. And then obviously for the price, if you think about the functionality of it, um, it's, it, it's pretty impressive. One final point I would mention is that the only thing I don't like about split keyboard machines that have a flat and then a raised portion is that the flat bit comes with a cover, a wet cover, um, standard from the manufacturer. This bit doesn't obviously, so if you're using it in a bookshop then that's not a problem, but if you're using it in hospitality, so a chip shop would be a nightmare for this machine um, in terms of this bit not being covered, because the last thing you want is pay 400 quid for a machine and then some vinegar or grease or whatever gets in there. So we'd always recommend um, hospitality, chippies, fast food, uh, pubs, always order it with the additional wet cover. I think it's around about 15 quid and we supply a cover that goes over this bit as well. So that's protected. Okay, yeah, so I'll put this video as part of a playlist where there'll be other sales videos going into more detail on some of the different functions of the machine. So please check those out. Subscribe because when we, whenever a till comes out, we'll always put a video up reviewing it um, and that'll appear in your feeds. And then for more information on all the registers we do, you can check out shopstuff.co.uk. Thanks for watching.